Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, we're going to continue with the Prophet series. Today, episode 3, Idris. So coming from an Orthodox Christian background, I never heard of the Prophet Idris. I'm very curious to find out. Guys, please do me the favor. If you enjoyed those videos, leave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. With no further ado, let's have a look. And make mention in the book of the Prophet Idris. We raised him to a very high level. Idris السلام, was the first to take up arms against another army, to fight against injustice. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. Indeed, he was very truthful and he was a prophet. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen after Adam the son of Adam, Shaith. And then from Sheath he had Anush, who was one of, his, one of his sons. Who carried out his mission after him. Then after him his son, Kenan. From there was Mihlail, and from Mihlail was Yarid or Yarid. Who took charge of his mission. And here the Quran, the next man or the son that came after him, the Quran mentions him, his name is Idris alayhi salam. Idris was born at the time of Adam. He was born when Adam alayhi salam was 840 years old. So Idris met Adam and Adam met Idris. Idris is the sixth grandson of Adam. In biblical terms, ancient names, he was called Enoch. He learned from ah, Adam alayhi salam, he learned from, from okay. Sheet alayhi salam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said Idris was a prophet. He was very good looking, he was very calm, he had a full grown beard. Mashallah. And he spoke very, very clearly. He was very patient. Idris alayhi salam was tall in stature, 60 cubits tall. And when he walked, his footsteps were long. They were big footsteps. They were similar to the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he walked calmly. He spoke very little. That if ever he wanted to speak, he would speak something beneficial, words of wisdom, or he would be silent. And when he walked, it was not his nature to constantly look upwards. He used to look downwards, like a person who constantly was thinking. So he'd walk and he would think a lot, ponder a lot, contemplate a lot. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. So writing before Idris did not exist. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Idris how to write. And Idris alayhi salam is the one that taught people how to write. Aziz always shout man. He came as a prophet not Why? to stop people from shirk or to call them to the correct information, but rather to help stop and call people away from acts of corruption which they knew were corruption. Away from their desires, as we know, such as zina and the act of killing. The people of that time were all upon Tawheed. But they were committing many sins and ignorance was spreading among them. He strove so hard and he spread the message and reminded people so much to bring them back to the straight path. When he saw the corruption spreading, especially among the people of Qabil, and that corruption is spreading even within the people of Idris, so Idris alayhi salam declared war against the corruption. The first prophet and messenger to call for jihad fighting in the path of Allah was Idris alayhi salam. And he prepared an army of horsemen and people walking, fighting against the people of Qabil and the corruption of the people of Qabil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Idris alayhi salam. Allah says, and mention in the book, in the Quran, Idris. He was a truthful prophet. And we raised him high in the heaven. What is meant when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we raised him high in the heavens. Abdullah ibn Abbas once asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma about this verse and we elevated him a high position. He asked him, what's this about Idris? 
So Ubay bin Ka'ab said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Idris one day that every day your deeds are equivalent to the good deeds of everybody else on the face of the earth. Over his own deeds, over his own rewards, over the good deeds of Idris, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give him the rewards of all the people living at the time of Idris. With simple calculation, Sayyidina Idris said, if that is the case, then if I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me a longer life, I would be able to accumulate more good deeds. So he had a friend from Makes the sense. angels and he spoke to this friend. Why don't we speak to the angel of death? Let's see what he has to say. To say, look, just try and see if you can seek permission to prolong a little bit. So the angel says, look, that is a matter that is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's no harm in trying. Come, you ride on my wing and let's go. So Idris alayhi salam went on the back of this angel and flew with him all the way to the heavens. He crossed the first heaven. He crossed the second heaven. He crossed the third heaven. When he got to the fourth heaven, they met the angel of death who was descending down to the earth. So this angel told the angel of death that Idris is asking that if you could make him live longer. So this angel of death said, and where's Idris? Then this angel said, he is with me. He is also on the fourth heaven. Then Malakul Maut said, Subhanallah. So the angel told him, what's amazing? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to take the soul of Idris in the fourth heaven. And I wondered how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Subhanallah. He brought him there. Idris came with one intention. Angel of death came with another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only happened what he wills. This angel speaking with the angel of death. Look, this is actually a hilarious metaphor and reminds me, of course, of the Quran when it states, but they plan and Allah plans and Allah is the best of planners. But moreover, it raises the question of free will, of course, because the free will of Idris told him that he would like to do more good and therefore live longer. So with his free will, yet again, he aspires to enter the fourth heaven. However, the plan of God was already that he will enter the fourth heaven and die right there. He on his back and saw that Idris has already passed away and elevated him to a very high level. Nobody passed away in that level except Sayyidina Idris. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa confirms in Sahih al-Bukhari that when he went up for Mi'raj, he met Idris alayhi salam in the fourth heaven. After the death of Idris, corruption started to increase even more and more and more. And people still believing in one Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal the most high, Allah Azza wa Jal the most greatest, Allah Azza wa Jal the most strongest. So after the death of Adam, all the way up to 1000 years, 10 centuries, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, people just worshipping one Lord, believing in one Lord. They believe in the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then after that one thousand they believed in one god but they didn't believe in anything that came with it this is why they fell into corruption and this is what we see nowadays as well many people declare that they do believe in god but do all kinds of immorality all it takes is going to instagram and when you see a woman claiming that god comes first in her bio you already know that she declared that only by typing on her phone however her actions speak against her that's when changes start to take place became a big gap between Idris and the next prophet and messenger being sent. Few centuries, no prophet, no messenger. These prophets and messengers had very righteous, God-fearing, obedient followers. And when the prophet went, people started to look up to those followers. Respected followers, ulama, salihin, scholars, righteous people. People used to respect them. There were five very, very righteous individuals and their names were Wad, Suwa', Yaghuth, Ya'uq and Nasr. And at the time of Idris, when they had a problem, they used to go to Idris. After Idris, they started to go back to those righteous people. After the death of the righteous people, what happened? After they passed away, Shaitan seized the opportunity 
And now he begins his mission. He starts off by whispering in their minds, in the minds of the people. Shaitan said to them, It's always the oh, same game. What a, what a wonderful person you are. What a wonderful. So Shaitan came and he grieved. Now you've got to look at the Shaitan's tactics here. We should have a remembrance for this person. So how are you going to have a remembrance for this person if we don't quickly make something that reminds us of this person? Look, we need to do this. We need to remember good people like this and honor them. We need to do this. <laughs> I've got a good idea for you. Why don't we get a rock? Just a rock. As a simple, maybe just looking at that rock will remind us about those good days. Exactly right, man. This is how sneaky the devil is. And nowadays people call it veneration of saints or whatnot. But ultimately, this is really how it sneaked into and it distracts, of course, of the worship of God. There's some people that um, it's, it's acceptable. True. There's nothing wrong and maybe a good thing. Sure. We're not doing anything wrong. We still believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, worshiping. We're not going to worship this rock. Just a, something to remind us of this righteous man. So people accepted that. And that generation that accepted this, they were wise enough not to fall into a deeper hole than that. Now Shaitan is very patient. He's got a plan. He sows the seed and he goes away. So he waited for that generation to pass. When the next generation came, he said, you know, you are the grandchildren of these, of these figures that went, ah, oh, what great grandfathers you had. You know these pictures, what you should do? You should take them and we should, we should honor them more. Respect them by carving out certain, you know, stones out of the shape of these heads. So they start to design and make out of the dust and mud and make out of rocks figures of human beings. When that generation passed and people forgot why exactly they had made those statues, he went to the next generation and said, you know, your forefathers, you don't know what they used to do. They used to worship these idols. These are statues. This is what brought them goodness. This rock is a simple... It's a slippery slope, wood. man. It's a very good explanation. I never heard about it this particular way. And it makes sense. Absolutely. Because you have the generations that then don't understand what those objects are anymore. Nowadays, for example, we are wondering who built the pyramids, who built Gobekli Tepe, etc. etc. We have no idea who the people were that built those structures. But moreover, even if we look into ancient Egypt, we will find that the Egyptians apparently just inherited those pyramids. They didn't build them themselves than the last great Egyptian civilization. So this explanation here makes all the sense in the world, of course. Those people forget why those things are built. Even nowadays, when you look around, man, most people, they do not know why they celebrate certain holidays. They do not understand where Santa Claus came from either. And this rock is a symbol of Sawa. That's amazing. And this rock is a symbol of Yahuth. He said, whenever they saw these idols, they worshipped the idols, so they became good people and goodness came in their direction. So after the second generation, third generation, people start to worship these rocks and believe that these rocks will get them closer to Allah. So the younger children who saw their parents going and sitting and making prostration and making dua towards the statues thought, you know, these are our gods. These are our gods. And they started to finally it's worship It's a steady decline. Statues. They completely forgot mm -hmm. about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started to worship these five idols. And that's how the shirk started to spread and the shirk took over the world. Now this was the point when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the first Rasul, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahu wa bihamdih subhanaka allahum wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I have to say I'm genuinely impressed because it truly describes the timeline and it would, of course, explain as well why Noah was sent after this, after this fall of men. You see the generosity spreading over and over, further and further, and ultimately God has to send a Rasul that will warn the people, a warner here. This reminds me, of course, of the position of Prophet Muhammad as well 
may peace be upon him, which was a warner to the people that have fallen into idolatry, etc. I didn't expect it reacting to this video whatsoever, but yes, it is linear, the description of God creating Adam at first, and obviously there is no need for spreading Tawhid, because it's already there, it is established. Adam is in direct contact with God, but over the generations you see innovation over innovation over innovation pop up, people worshipping statues, stones and what not. And this identification of the problem, this problem-solving attitude, you can only find in Islam. Yet again, this is truly the most impressive aspect of Islam to me personally. When I talk to people, people ask me, what's new about Islam? If I compare it to the Bible, for example, the Bible is so much bigger than the Quran. Is there really something new in Islam? I, of course, understand that position because I came from the same ignorance. However, when you once realize what the Tawheed truly is, you of course understand the value of that message. No, it's nothing new, of course. It was there from day one. This is the message of Islam, to return to the worship of one God and to get away from all the innovation, to get away from all the inventions and all the other worship that is redirecting your attention towards something else and not towards God. What is more valuable than understanding that God is on top of your priority list. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.